Hey, welcome into Sports with Balls. I'm <laughs> Jeff Michael. Uh, better late than never, right? That's right. That's right. I'm Lauren Leal. Uh, we are getting adjusted in here and yeah. getting all set up at Christian's Tailgate. We're back live on location. It feels yeah. good to be got, back. Got to do a Thursday show uh, this week because Monday was a little iffy because uh, Lauren couldn't couldn't make it. I couldn't make it. You know, it's circumstances. Yep. Circumstances. Yep. So, yep. But we're here on Thursday, like we said. And look. It kind of feels normal because we used to do Thursday shows. We did. We had Mondays and Thursdays. When it was with Grant. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, so uh, welcome into Sports with Balls. I'm Jeff Michael. We are live at Christian's Tailgate. Get your you-know-what up here. Come see us. Have a drink. Uh, we're at the one in the Heights. There's four other locations here in Houston, Texas. Uh, if you guys want to get some drinks, some great, great food. In fact, I was just eating. I, I'm barely digesting it. It's a delicious, delicious food here at Christian's Tailgate. want to thank them. So, uh, sports world is booming. There's a lot going on. Lot Absolutely. Going on. I was going to say real quick, touching on uh, being here at Christian Sailgate, it's pretty packed, guys, too. Yeah, it's busy. I mean, uh, it's busy. It's busy, I should say. So, there's a bunch of tables here. People are just hanging out after work, I guess. getting, a, Like I said, getting a beer. Uh, some families here having some nachos. Just having some good times, watching some sports, you know. They're on right now. I don't Things have are my in full swing. We have we have an NFL game tonight as well. So preseason. Preseason NFL. You don't have game. your what? I don't have my computer. That's right. Okay, so <laughs> I'm pissed. Jeff doesn't have his computer, but you dropped it off. You're getting it fixed. Yep. It's gonna be okay. Yep. And you're gonna have it next week. I hope I hope uh, when we have a big <laughs> draft show. I didn't realize how much I needed my computer until it froze on me. Uh, two minutes before the draft started last night, my fantasy football draft. By the way, those of y'all having Oh, I didn't realize it happened during that. Two minutes prior to my fantasy football draft, my <laughs> computer just went out. And uh, luckily... God doesn't want you to play. Yeah, luckily I was on the... I was, I, luckily I was able to do it on the phone. I've got a live draft coming up in three days in Las Vegas. That's going to be a lot yeah, of fun. Yeah, so Jeff is getting geared up, all ready to go. Um, how excited are you... And uh, nervous, but oh, the yeah. Lungs. And so, <laughs> you said you're basically you're gonna spend time on the strip, is that right? You're gonna try to that sounds awkward, but yeah, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> no, we've got a bunch of things planned, uh, but our draft is 4 p.m. Vegas time on Saturday live. It'll be interesting. I will go live on Sports with Balls at some point. Okay. So you guys will get a Be little bit. Be on the bit lookout of, for a trunk, Jeff. Uh, I'm just kidding. I don't know. Not, I don't know. Not gonna say hey, I'm sober. I not will say, say I, I'm sober on that one. I will say you, you, week closure. after week you've been amping yourself up and getting ready and in shape for this pool day. Yeah. You, you you ready? You well, fully no, there? Look, that completely fell off the wagon the last week and a half. I've eat, I've been eating ice cream in bed, hot fudge Sundays. Why? Uh, just uh, it was comfortable. <laughs> I thought you wanted to be all six pack abs, right? I was for trying. Us. <coughs> you Caesar's know. pool party. Or but something. then I was like, I was thinking about it. And I'm like, you know what? I'm getting ready for like one day at the pool. Like, so? uh, like uh, you know, I'd rather eat ice cream in bed. Uh, if only so. you knew what it is to be a girl. <laughs> like, anyways, yeah, Vegas will be fun. I cannot wait to go. Those of y'all that are drafting this weekend, stay in tune with Sports with Balls for all of the NFL updates. There's plenty of injuries that are going around. Josh Jacobs still trying to find out what's going down with him. Uh, Jonathan Taylor trying to figure out where he's going to play. He has till Tuesday. I think the Colts gave him till Tuesday to figure out <coughs> a destination. Yeah, so... Uh I'll, I'll ask you questions about that when we dive into it. All right. The, plenty to go around there. The uh, Astros got absolutely bang today. <laughs> yeah, man. The Red Sox uh, broke some records what on happened? the Astros' behalf today. We'll get into that in a little bit. The NCAA. For all you gamblers out there, big-time college football gamblers, college football starts on Saturday. Two days from now. That is nuts. Is it the Army game? Navy. 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 Navy and Notre Dame will kick off in Ireland. So I think Ireland. that's uh, – there's a few more other, there's a few other games, and we'll, we'll get into those in a little bit as well. So we'll talk about the NCAA. And then, uh, like you said earlier, the NFL preseason, last week of the NFL preseason before the, uh, they stumble into the season. Aaron Rodgers starting uh, for the Jets. You all right with that? Aaron Rodgers with the Jets. See, I want to see what he's going to look like. All right. I want to see what he's going to look like. How so, long do you yeah. leave him out there? Because I remember. Only, it, you, you just need to see a, a couple sequences, you know. A couple series? Yeah. That's it. Yeah. They used to play the first half. That's like a long time ago. 
I remember the final preseason game, all the starters play the first half. That has gone way out the window because of injuries. For but, sure. You know, I get it. Uh, Nathan, Nathan Small, what's going down? I see Chewy's on there. All you guys joining in on all the social media channels. Welcome into Sports with Balls on Twitter, Twitch, YouTube, uh, Facebook, all of them. Thank you guys for joining the show. Send in your questions. I don't have my computer, so uh, they'll have to be read to me. So I'll try yeah, to no, no, no. I got us. I got us. Yeah, like you said, uh, Chewy, Nathan, thanks so much for tuning in and everybody else out there that is hearing us live. And, of course, if you're listening to uh, the playback, well, we're happy that you're with us here at Sports with Balls in – Christian's tailgate. Let's get into it. We got a lot to run down today. Nothing like should, super crazy, but I got some opinions and takes that I want to get. Should we welcome from you. in our new sponsor? You want to try to? Should we? Should we give Hobuzz a shout out? Uh, go ahead. Hobuzz. <laughs> oh man, Washington Ho. Tony Busby came up with this incredible new drink. I, I had the cans. Uh, we'll bring them next time to sit them out here. Uh, they're pretty incredible. This is a THC infused drink. So if you're not, it's 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 you can have a good time in a social setting without drinking alcohol. Oh, I like that. It's THC, and it's a seltzer. It's like so a, like I a truly. I don't understand. Or a white claw. Does THC relax you? What does that do? I'm not a THC guy, but yes, it does. Okay. So, so this is. I asked him. I asked him. The, oh, okay. So Jason, our producer. I'm just saying. It does this work, right? Can you hear me? All right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What's THC? Oh, THC is the. I'm not saying what is it. No, what's it do to you? Does it relax you? It, it's the. Uh, what's the not. It, it, it has to do with like marijuana. Yeah, yeah, Mary Jane. Yeah, yeah. Yes. yeah. Mary Jane. Like, I don't know if I can Sweet. say it or not. Yeah, but it's the uh, it's, is that the psychoactive ingredient that kind of yes. that yeah. gets it going. So yeah. it's funny. I told my mom. So I had this stuff in the refrigerator because I, I met up with Washington the other day and we we're talking about his company. By the way, go to hobuzzco.com. That's h o b u z z c o dot com to learn more about this. Eight three two nine two nine four five six. Three is their phone number. If you want to order any of this stuff, they've got it already in a bunch of bars across uh, Houston and, and spreading across Texas. It's a THC infused seltzer. Says Texas sober. So yeah. yeah. So it, you know, if you don't, a lot of people don't drink as much as they used to. The effects of alcohol when we get older get a little bit uh, worse on the body. Uh, not, I'll I'm let you know a, how that is Monday. <laughs> you know, I'm not a big drinker myself, so yeah. maybe this is something that I will give a shot. And I told my mom, so it's in the refrigerator. My mom just came in town to watch the kids while I go to Vegas. Okay. And I'm like, Mom, she has a trouble. She has trouble sleeping. She's in her. 60s. Oh, this is this is Red Bull, guys. Go ahead, <laughs> go ahead. And I told her, I said. Drink one of these at night. Let me know how you feel. Because you just said maybe it does relax you, right? She drank it. No, not yet. So oh, I, uh, I'm, okay. I'll report okay. on Monday how my mom feels about drinking one of these buzzes. So maybe it's good. Look, look, THC and CBD are a huge ordeal. We know that. CBD, that's what I was thinking of. Okay, yeah. so it's a, it, it's like relative to. Yeah. So, okay, got it, uh, got you know, it. If you guys are uh, down to not get uh, effed up on alcohol, grab you some of these uh, buzz seltzers and uh, get to it. And by the way. I've had I've had there's two or three different flavors and they're delicious. They really are. Hmm. They are delicious. So, anyways. Wait, but it didn't on. do anything to you. No, I just drank a couple of like equivalent shots, right? So, okay. He, the, here's the way he explained it to me cuz I don't smoke a lot of Mary Jane and that's like THC, <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah, I do not do that. <laughs> so, but uh, you know, the the effects of some of the 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 good ingredients are taken out and, and apparently they're pr pretty good for you, right? Okay. So, if you drink one of these cans, it's an equivalent of half of a bowl of marijuana. Okay, maybe I won't try this. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. You'll see. That's if you drink a full can. I don't know. I don't know. Read the can. Go listen. You're go to H O H O B U Z Z C O dot com. Check out their new seltzer. But they're a new sponsor, so yay! Yeah, they're delicious. We'll, we'll have the cans. Hellbuzz. We'll have the cans here next week. I'll uh, I'll drink one on camera live. We'll okay. see. We'll see how it all works out. All right, let's get into some sports. Sports, sports, sports. So you're going to <sighs> Vegas to do your draft and everything like that. So football is here right now. Yep. We just had the Steelers and Falcons kick off last preseason game. Well, not last first game of the weekend slate of last preseason <laughs> games that was really hard for me to say yeah. um it's, it's been a, been running around like crazy day, all day today as far as my mind goes uh but anyways sports tonight sports throughout the weekend nfl i wanted to ask you jeff for the preseason were there any shockers or takeaways that were like huge to you saying wow this was not what i expected or the opposite of saying wow in a good way they really need to stick with, with this. Well, look, it, we have this weekend to get by, but so far there's only been a few injuries. All right, now it used to be every year we'd have a major quarterback go down. Every year we'd have a major running back go down. 
or, or somebody, I mean, a huge part of a team that would like derail almost the success of that team. Well, hence we guys only staying in a couple. Yeah, so we haven't seen that this year. There has been injuries. There's been holdouts, and but we're used to those. But there hasn't been a major one, and I'm happy for that. Now, mm -hmm. granted, we still got these these games to go. Hopefully, we don't see any of that. But man, uh, I'm excited that no major key players yet, like quarterbacks, major running backs, stuff like that, have got injured to where it completely changes the outcome of that team. So, I'm excited to see. I asked you a little bit ago about Aaron Rodgers. I'm excited to see well, how he fits in. I was gonna say no. Uh there was a backup running back that got hurt in the Colts organization, and now that Jonathan Taylor is gone, or going to be gone, uh, that's going to be a yet. big question mark. I don't, know. I don't know where he's going. I think, okay, so the spots of Jonathan Taylor. Here, I have him. Uh, let me pull it up. I told you. So, here, here Jonathan we go. Taylor. Buffalo, Kansas City, Chicago, and Miami. So, they finally gave him, granted him the request for a train. Yeah. And this is where he's looking at. Where could he fit in? Obviously, I could see him wanting to go to Kansas City to get Super back Bowl. into the Super Bowl. Uh, the Buffalo, Buffalo Bills, I mean, they're neck and neck with KC. They just need to get over the hump to get to the Super Bowl. Uh, Chicago Bears, that's pretty interesting. Yeah, I, I don't know. Justin Fields is getting a lot of talk these days. I, I Look, I, I'm not a believer yet in Justin Fields, but a lot of people have him way up there in their rankings. So, um, I, I don't know. Miami seems like a great fit for him, and who wouldn't go to? Who wouldn't want to go to Miami? But there's a little bit of drama still in Indy to go. Mm -hmm. He has to – look, a trade has to be completed by Tuesday before they make their final roster. The NFL teams have until this coming Tuesday to do the 54-man roster. Right. And three. Yeah, or 53. 53. And yeah. So he, he has to be on that. Mm -hmm. So or, right. or be traded. So he's either going to be a Colt on Tuesday or somewhere else. And the problem is. And then the if Colts he stays gonna, with the Colts, that just makes it so awkward. Yeah, We've it. seen that a million times. The chemistry is never the same with, with whatever position they come back into. Well, and, and, and the Colts owner is just, man, uh, is Jim Irsay. Is that his Irsay. name? Irsay. Yeah, 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 yeah. He just is. He's out there. He's just out there, and it just drives me nuts on some of the things he says, man. It's, it's Jerry Jones's sometimes, and he's not that old. I'm like, wow. But, you know, look, I don't know if Indianapolis is going to get what they want for Jonathan Taylor, and that's going to be the holdup. They're not going to get two, three first-rounders for Jonathan Taylor. So we talked about Jonathan Taylor, and I wanted to come in here on one of the comments from Nathan Small. He said, why would Diggs say he wants out of Buffalo? Because we talked about that being one of the options for Jonathan Taylor. That's an interesting point. Like Diggs also came back and said he didn't say that. Okay, so, so it's a it's a he said she said thing. Like Stephen A. Smith is the one that actually caught that up, and we all know Stephen A. is good at uh at, at drawing numbers. <laughs> and so that's exactly I, I think that was clickbait. I, I don't know. Maybe he did hear it somewhere. But Stephen A. I mean, uh, Diggs took to Twitter saying, "I did not say that." But it has been heavily rumored that he wants out. We saw the drama at the beginning of, uh, of camp where he held out for a little bit and didn't report until almost the last day. So it's, um, it's interesting. Uh, uh, Josh Allen sticks up for digs. We'll see what happens. <laughs> Buffalo's, a, Buffalo's an interesting, interesting story, right? Because last year, the preseason hype for Buffalo was a Super Bowl or bust. They were the number one team. Oh, projected. I had them picked. Yeah, I think everybody. One hundred percent. Yep. Josh Allen, although he didn't look that great in the preseason games, just saying <laughs> from what I saw. But continue on. Yeah. It, so this year, the hype is not there on Buffalo as as much as it was last year. They're still going to be one of the top AFC teams, or looked at as one of the top AFC teams. But if they go playoffs and one and done, mm -hmm. uh, then you're going to have some people wondering if 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 Buffalo's can put it together, right? Then then you really worry if, if Diggs is going to be like, yeah, I'm out of here. I, I got to go somewhere else. Because then I don't know if it's about the talent as much as it's about the organization. Mm -hmm. And I think that's where people are wondering. Maybe Stephen Diggs in, in private conversations is questioning the organization, and that's where Stephen A. may have got this. And if they don't go far in the playoffs this year or try to get or get to the Super Bowl, then, yeah, I can see where Diggs is like, yeah, uh, you know, I got to move on. Yeah. So I yeah. think that's where that comes in. That and uh, I guess we'll see in his brother. Yeah. His brother as well. Yep. <clears throat> okay, guys, like we said, it's the last weekend of preseason games. Anyone that you're going to be, like, looking forward to this weekend, do you even care? Are you just ready for the regular season to be here, Jeff? I, I, <sighs> yeah. I, I, Mixture <laughs> of emotions, I guess? <laughs> I guess I've been watching, you know, I've been watching – 
Aaron Rodgers on HBO and on Hard Knocks. Oh, you're ready to see the Jets. Now you're on the Jets. So no, no, no. Jeff does this. You you bandwagon teams regardless. They're like, they're your number one team or not. You're like, oh, I like these guys now. I saw a lot of them in the, no. the Hard Knocks. I just, okay, and not to mention I picked Aaron Rodgers in a fantasy team last night. So I, I want to oh, see. Oh, money's involved. Got he went, it. So he went back-to-back -back MVPs, which shows that I get it, age, like he's up there in age, four, 40 years old. But he went back-to-back -back MVPs. And then last year, of course, injuries all over the place. It, it was a rough season for him. Uh, and then now he goes to, to New York where he's got weapons. This is a great team. I just wonder if he can get back to – if he's 80% of the what he was in 21 and 22 – or, I mean, I'm sorry, 20 and 21, you're going to have an incredible Aaron Rodgers. And I think that's why we need to see a little bit of him this weekend, and I'm yeah. glad he's going to be out there so we can see how, you know, we, we get a feel for, like, what we're not seeing when what's happening in practice and real game time. On and the flip side of that, Corey Davis, uh, I was excited to see him with Aaron Rodgers, uh, suddenly retired from the New York Jets this past week, and that was really interesting. I, I you, you know, think he knew? <laughs> he knew something. I don't know if it had to do with Aaron Rodgers. No, or, Aaron Rodgers knew. Yeah, I don't know. I, that was weird for me. I, Corey Davis was a very talented kid, very talented wide receiver. And he was 28 years old to abruptly retire like that when all the hype. I don't think that I saw much of him in hard knocks, though, so there might be some personal issues, some things going on there. So uh, whatever, whatever he's doing, I, I wish him well, right? So, yeah, Corey Davis retires. So Rodgers lost one of his weapons. This past week in Corey Davis, but he's got incredible. Like Brees Hall looks great. His offensive line looks decent. The defense, the Jets' defense, is one or two in fantasy football, like rankings wise. So that puts them up there in the top defenses in the league. We're going to see if they can hold up. If that defense can hold up and you get 80%, like I said, 80% of the Aaron Rodgers you had in 20 and 21. Jets are going to be good. Wow. They're going to be real good. So uh, Jets defense and Cowboys defense. Cowboys yeah. defense, I, I mean, the bar is really high for them. I agree. This is it. This, I, this is their. I don't <laughs> want to say this is their, their year. year. <laughs> I don't. I'm not. I don't want to say that. I don't want to say that because you still got who under the helm? Dak Prescott. Uh, he's got to get it together. But as far as defenses go, those units are stacked. Boy, what's going to be the off season if Dak Prescott and the Cowboys don't win a playoff game? Is he gone? Man, I, 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 it is because even the diehardest of Cowboy fans that watch this show, I get contacted each week about this, and they are even on the fence now with Dak. And if it no, does I, not happen this year, Dak's not your man. I mean, I've talked to people that love the Cowboys yep. or just like root for the Cowboys because yep. they like them a little bit, and they they know like, oh, yep. Dak Prescott is just not doing it for us. That's so rough. you got a lot to prove, Dak. Um, not personally, but professionally out yep. there on the field, get it done. I agree. Uh, a guy who I think also has a lot to prove is in Denver and Russell Wilson because. We need to see him not be a shell of himself like we've seen in the preseason. And I had a conversation about him earlier uh, with someone who worked with the organization when he was back in Seattle, and they said that he just kind of stopped doing everything that he was doing with his workouts, with everything off season. He, and once he, his wife, Sierra, bought into the soccer organization in Seattle, and every, like, all the outside noise started coming in. That's whenever Russell just started to deplete and not look like Russell. So you're going all in on this guy. You spend all the money. This is no news. He just needs to come back. And uh, Sean Payton needs to whip him into shape. Well, he got no help today with his star wide receiver, Jerry Judy, going down with a hamstring issue right. that's already going to, what they said, sideline for at least four weeks. So he's going to be without his number one wide receiver for uh, at least the first two games of the season, it looks like. And they just lost another wide receiver two weeks ago. So the Denver Broncos are starting way behind the eight ball right now. They are. So the ex it's like, Bronco fan, I'm so sorry. Your expectations need to be around eight, eight nine wins. That would be high, I, I think. I think so, too. Right, right? Like, I think so, too. So you guys that thought that Peyton was coming in and that, that Russell Wilson was going to be behind Sean Peyton and that Boom is going to get done this year, I, I would temper those expectations. That's literally what was said, that Sean Peyton is a saving grace. And I yeah. go, look, the coach is great. He should not be your saving grace. He's yeah. not out there on the field. Yeah.
So uh, Jerry top, Judy, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, uh, Ian Rappaport tweeted out that uh, it's a moderate hamstring injury, and that they're looking. Uh, there's some optimism in Denver for him coming back. Yeah, hamstrings. Hamstrings, but hamstrings take a Ooh. while. I've torn mine. Ask us. Ask, ask Hopkins. Hopkins has been sidelined almost two years uh, during the season at, at numerous times with hamstring issues. And you try to come back, and then you go, you run f one fly route, one fly route, and boom, it's off again. Nathan Smell, I feel you. He said, I still laugh at the Broncos commercial with Russ. Let's ride. Lottie, know, Lottie said Russ, Russ had looked the same for a while. I, and, you know, that's what I was getting to, Lottie Guapa commenting. Thank you for joining the show, Lottie. Russ Kevin hasn't. Anthony Grant Miles is watching. What's up, Grant? Uh oh, Grant. We were talking Cowboys. He probably turned it off. So. Uh, <laughs> he, Grant, Grant agrees with us. Huge Cowboys fan. Yeah. Jack is not the guy. He yep. agrees with us. Yep. He Grant, agrees with us. Uh, we'll get Grant on the show next week. It looks like Grant's out there traveling. He'll be back with us next week. We'll do a show with him. Okay, Excited sounds great. Excited to do that one. But good deal, good deal. Russell Wilson, yeah, Denver Broncos. He's older. He's he's regressed. Russell Wilson hasn't been that guy for a long, long time. By the way, did you see where Pete Carroll? Remember Russell Wilson threw the interception through the interception on the one yard line, Patriots, and uh, they said Marshawn Lynch should have got the ball, ran it in, they would have won the Super Bowl. So this past week, Pete Carroll, Pete Carroll came out and said, "Yes, that was absolutely the wrong call, and that he blew it." Pete Carroll did. Yes. Golf okay. Club. Good job, Pete Carroll. Finally took, admitting <laughs> that that was a bad took ownership, call. took responsibility. <laughs> yeah. Put it on his back. Yep, dug it. So uh, yep. there you go, Seattle Seahawks fans. But yeah, I don't think that I don't think Russell Wilson. I'm not. I'm not going to sit here and say he's done. I'm not going to say Russell Wilson's out. You know, he's done for good. But I'm not putting Russell Wilson in the top two tiers of quarterbacks in the NFL right now. Mm -hmm. and he's he's with Jimmy Garoppolo mm -hmm. and those guys. That's that's where he's at. Derek Carr. Uh, that, uh, that's that's where I think Russell Wilson's at. Interesting. And is Jimmy Garoppolo winning the Super Bowl? I don't think anybody's got that in their book. I, I, mm, the I, Raiders, I, I think the Russell Raiders. Wilson, what he's done in the past is way better than Jimmy Garoppolo. I'm sorry. Well, yeah. I know yeah, Garoppolo has yeah, yeah. been in the Super Bowl as well, but Russ won one. Yep. He can throw. Jimmy cannot. Um, <laughs> if, like I said, if he can just get back to that. Now, Derek Carr is an interesting relation. Just because they do have a lot of the same characteristics, I will say. And the accuracy, yeah. uh, you go up and down each game, game, I feel like, for both of these guys. So, yeah, we'll see. We'll see. Um, I do. I would like to see how Derek Carr does with the Saints this season. Last year, Be not fun. great. Uh, Chris Olave. We'll see if he comes back this year. Michael Thomas. You know, Michael Thomas for the Saints is way under the radar right now. And it's interesting because obviously he's had issues with the organization. He had his ankle hurt. Then it I was, was about to say it's always injury. Yeah, too. Uh, but remember, and he, they said he wasn't hurt. And then he's like, yeah, and he like waited, and he said, yeah, I am hurt. And then they waited on surgery for like six months, and then yeah. he finally, it was awkward. It was awkward to say the least. But he was a top tier wide receiver for two, three years in the NFL prior to that. So mm -hmm. maybe he has a resurgence. And Chris Olave over there is amazing. So I, I can see if Carr has some weapons and you get Kamara back after week three, the New Orleans Saints could be pretty good. Okay, is Kamara going to be on your fantasy list is the question. Mm. No? Yeah? It's I, not sexy. Yeah, yeah, it's not. It's not it's, sexy. It's not. Yeah. I, but I, I would wait till later rounds mm -hmm. to draft Kamara for fantasy football. But if you can get him as a shocker in like round six or seven. So yeah. you're starting out with a C. Day Stroud, right? No. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> Yeah. No, okay. I didn't mean Texans to I didn't fan. Mean to that blow. I just saw so the Texans are playing the Saints. We were just talking about Michael Thomas and the Saints yep. and Derek Carr and all that. So I figured I would bring that up with the Houston Texans. Man, uh got a lot to prove to see if they can get over the hump and win one preseason game with CJ Stroud, with uh, you know, the other two guys looked great. Davis Mills looked great in that first preseason game, and Case Keenum looking like his normal self, too. So maybe these guys will be starting somewhat during the season. No, they're no? not. No, they Case? Are, no, they're not. I can see Case Keenum coming they're, in. They're not going really to rip C.J. Stroud. He's got learning curves. So if he's the day one starter, he stays your day. He stays your starter throughout the whole season. I get that. You let a rookie get in there well, and he's, he's the future go through your, all yeah. of there. Yeah. He's the I just see, you know, if you're not getting any wins, you got to. Why wouldn't you put yeah, in Case Keenum? Okay, so 
Welcome to Sports with Balls, everybody. Her name is Lauren Leal. Follow her, Lauren double underscore Leal <laughs> on Twitter. Massive Texas fan. Was a Houston Texans cheerleader. Uh, cheerleader of the year, 2014, right? Hottest cheerleader in the NFL. 12, thank 2012, you. 2012, yeah, okay. so look it up. Uh, so I want to ask you, you're, and, and you've watched C.J. Stroud during the preseason for two games. Now he's going in for three. Are you convinced just at all? Like, what, what is your outlook on C.J. Stroud right now and the t Houston Texans? Well, there was a lot of hype. There was a lot of excitement. Yep. And it just did not meet expectation of what took place on the field. That being said, it, things can change. We've seen how he played in college. So I just think they really need to mesh better. Um, I'm not sure. Like, I, he'll get more comfortable as he goes along. We just need to keep seeing that progression on the field. The only three points that they got last week in the second preseason game was when C.J. Stroud was in the game. So, I mean, let him down the field, got the field goal kick. Uh, but we need to see more production than that. Yeah, that last <laughs> last week's preseason game of the Texans was absolutely horrendous. Uh, they got an interception on the first play of the game from Tua Tagovailoa. And it was on the six-yard line. They failed to even score a point. And then the uh, then the Dolphins went down 94 yards and scored a touchdown. And then it was an onslaught after that. It was pretty embarrassing. And I, I feel for Texans fan because when you get D'Amico Ryan's in here, I, I think the defense the defense has has promise. You see some really good flashes of the, you know their picks in the defense, and, and D'Amico Ryan's doing what he does. Like mm -hmm. that looks amazing. Mm -hmm. Offense wise. Man, Damian Pierce and C.J. Stroud are going to have a rough season, and I like Pierce a lot. I, I, I'm not a true believer in C.J. Stroud. I, I think everybody knows that. Ohio State, for me, is a wide receiver school, and not we don't see many and great quarterbacks come out. Well, I was going to say uh, wide receiver school. Speaking of University of Houston, Tank Dell, yeah. I think, is a great addition to the team. So if C.J. Stroud can get the ball out to him, I think a lot of touchdowns are going to happen. I think uh, you're going to get um, closer down the field, further down the field, move the chains more. So that's your guy whenever you're looking to move the chains through the air. If they get five wins this year, are you going to be happy? Uh. I will be happy for every one of the wins, but I will want them to continue, if that makes sense. <laughs> Five wins and you'll be okay with it, huh? Wow. All right. I, 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 I would think that Texan fan wants, what, seven, eight wins? Oh, of course. Yeah. Of course. You want to see what took place when J.J. Watt was here. You want to see what took place when DeAndre Hopkins was here. When, I hate to say it, Bill O'Brien was here. And get the AFC South Division title. I mean, come on now. And that's kind of good what's going on with the Colts and Jonathan Taylor. It helps the Texans, but the Texans got to help themselves. We'll bring in producer Jason Vu. What's up, Jay? Thank you for producing what's the up, show, what's up? as always. Uh, you going to be all right, Texans fan? Five wins. You, you okay with that? Yeah. I'd be, like five wins? Five wins out of 17. Five and 12. That's your, that's, your, that's your record. Are you okay and looking forward to next season? Uh, <laughs> or, what do, or what do you need? You need seven? Uh, give me six. Six wins? <laughs> give me six. Yeah, and then you could say it's a little bit of a... Uh, uh, six, six good wins. Look. With yeah, CJ, yeah, there CJ you go. Stroud, there you go. Good CJ wins says. and then getting blown out by the teams that we're supposed to get blown out by. <laughs> yeah. I mean, think about it. They've had four wins. They've had... I mean, it, the bar has been so low for the turnover <laughs> for head coaches the past couple of seasons. I mean, you had David Culley come in here, and then you had coach from last season. Uh, can't His name is not coming to my mind, but Whitebeard, we know him. And so this Lovey is Smith. Lovey Smith. Thank you. Um, third coach in three seasons. Who, I mean, who lost the number one pick for the Houston Texans. <laughs> we're, who goes into the first <laughs> home game of the season and is okay with a tie like what that was nuts mm, last season mm. we are not going to repeat that D'Amico Ryans do not do that you are not okay wow. with a tie um and it is not soccer so I think that 
The expectation to get six wins or more is great compared to the last two seasons. Uh, I think of the coach turnover, the young squad. You have a couple of veteran presence, like I just mentioned, in the quarterback position. Other, other than that, everybody's new. Like your center's out, your right guard's out that have been here for a long time. Um, I'm trying to think of uh, other veteran presence, and it, nothing comes to mind. Yeah, the Texans so, have a huge hill to climb. Learning I mean, curve. a mountain to learning climb curve. this year. Uh, the Titans, the Colts, and the Jacksonville Jaguars uh, all oh. have all have two easy games this year. <laughs> Kevin Anthony, six and eleven Texans records, twelve and five Cowboys. Come on, losing the first Look, round again. Kevin's not far off. Uh, not, uh, the Cowboys. Well, you know, the Cowboys could do that. I don't know if they'll reach 12. I think the I think the over under for the Cowboys is 10 and a half right now, and that's about spot on. I think I would take. It's hard to get 11, 12 wins. That division's going to be a little tougher than I think that they they those Philadelphia and New York games are going to be really tough. I think I'd go 10, 11 wins for them. I don't know about 12. So he's right there. He's right there. Mama Leal joining in the show. Mm -hmm. What's up, Mama Leal? Um, you know. We're on college or well, NFL for, for a little bit, but college football is starting off uh, this weekend. You are a UT fan, right? University of Texas. Well, I grew up a Longhorn fan, but I am Cougar. Well, yeah, you went to University of Houston's. So. Yeah, 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 yeah. And you have H. I played red and white. You have H looking to move uh, up the board and become one, a, a powerhouse in one of these conferences. I don't even know where everybody is at this point. <laughs> But Saturday, August 26, 2003, in two days, the Navy will take on Notre Dame in Dublin, Ireland. That is in that's incredible. Good for them. I'm surprised you're afternoon. not going there instead of you're going to Vegas. It's a little cheaper, Vegas. <laughs> Than going to Ireland, yeah. Yeah, I can concur. 1.30 in the afternoon, uh, Notre Dame is minus 20 and a half. They are currently ranked 13th in the nation. I will be taking Notre Dame in that game because they're being Dublin. I think that's going to be absolutely amazing. The other games slated for Saturday, UTEP and Jacksonville State, UMass, New Mexico State, Ohio and San Diego State, Hawaii and Vanderbilt. And I get the night game that they want to really pump up is San Jose State. Versus number six and the reigning Heisman Trophy winner, USC, and they are favored by 30 and a half. And then Florida International and Louisiana Tech. But uh, Saturday night kicks off college football. How excited? What one are you more excited for? Saturday night or Saturday afternoon or next Sunday? Oh, next Sunday. NFL. I'm sorry. I've always been, uh, and, and, and we're Two in Sundays. Texas. Everybody loves college football. I do too. I've just always loved the NFL. I just do. I just do. Bucket list, would you go uh, – What's what game would you go to first? Um, Ohio State, Michigan, in Michigan, or San Francisco, Dallas Cowboy in San Francisco? Why do you have to say San Francisco? That is the worst city ever. No, well, that, I, look, I've been to that stadium. I've been to that stadium. It's Niners very fans, cool. Are, Niners fans are dope. I, I just, Levi Stadium is very cool. Those are two good – Good teams. Uh, the Niners, Niners and Cowboys, would be fun to watch. No, Ed, I would go to I would go to Jerry's World. Oh, you go to Dallas. Ah, that's a good stadium. It's just too big. Golly, it's huge. It's a, that's that stadium is bigger Why than most cities. You've said like Mile High or something, I, or Kansas City. You just said you don't even like Russell. You want to go watch him play? I used to. He just is not <laughs> what watch, he was. Go watch Russ. He's cook. not fun to watch go anymore. Ru watch Russ cook. No. Oh, my gosh. I, I'm going to Ohio State, Michigan. College football is amazing. Penn State, I, I'd like to go, we are Penn State. You know, if you're giving me those options, I'm I, I'm going to take it back and go college football on you. Yeah, it, go going to a game. Now, that's what I'm saying. If you For the actual experience of a game, I'm going to Ohio State, Michigan. Mm -hmm, that mm -hmm. is fantastic. Uh, U of H in Texas this year. Great game. Oh, my goodness. October 21st. It is going are you, down. Are you, are you getting me on the field? Down. Uh, we'll see about that. You're going to be at the game? I said, are you getting me on the field? Then, yeah, I'm going. <laughs> <laughs> so I got to be your ticket and get you on the field? Bam. Well, no, I can get my ticket. What, I got to walk down there and say, hi, Lauren. I know her. Is that what I'm I know do? her. <laughs> I need the, I need, look, I, no, I want to walk just, in with just, the bag. Okay, no, 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 you got to wear a U of H shirt. I'm going to pick you as a contestant, and then you can come down on the field and play a game. 
what game am I playing? <laughs> but I'll do it. I'm we'll in. We'll figure it out. We'll figure I'll it videotape out. it. I'm in. We'll if I can get out. down there, uh, U of H, Texas, uh, yeah. I, I'll apply for credentials and see if I can get down there. But I will go down there and play a game for sure. Absolutely. Make sure it's a game okay. I can play. If throwing a football somewhere, I'm Yeah. Down. Yeah. Oh, I'm in. Okay. All right. Boom. All right. Done. You, you heard it here first. You have to be a, a student, though, so you got to really make what? look the part. <laughs> Can I look like a college – Jason, can I pull off a college student? Like if I shave – Grad student. Grad student. Okay, yeah. Yeah, you could do that. You can. What if you were studying – 20, uh, 27, 28? In the medicine, medicine field. In the medicine field? You hey, know? we all can pass for college. There you go. Hey, Bam. I'll take it. Yeah, thank you, Jason. I'll take it. <laughs> our, uh, listen, our, so our listeners are like, no, you can't. <laughs> uh, U of H, oh, I, I just want to hear the announcer. U of H student, Jeff Michael <laughs> – yeah. I mean, I'll take it. Let's Class go. Class of. <laughs> Class of. Freshman. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Staying in the door. <laughs> Dude, let me back in this he sorority house. I'm in. Oh, my God. Hey, Jeff. <laughs> what? what is this? Days and confused? I'll go to a frat party. I'm down. No, you're trying to I hit on the college girls. Oh, yeah. No, don't. Well, you said I uh, get me in the sorority houses. <laughs> man, this is sports with balls tonight, guys. Oh, Normally man. we don't get this much. <laughs> college football hey, we're talking is back. <laughs> speaking of college football and just football in general, I saw an article today on the XFL and how it is basically here to stay. Because really? they have expanded it to three more teams, four more teams this upcoming season um, in St. Louis, Arlington, San Antonio, and Orlando, Florida. So it's currently made up of eight teams, and they've changed some of the rules. So I have some of the rules here. I don't want to bore you with them, but uh, just saying, it looks like the XFL is here to stay in the springtime. I don't know what's going to happen with Houston because they play at TDECU TD Stadium, which is going under construction next season. Um, so they're going to have to find somewhere else to play. So who won last year? Why'd you ask me that? <laughs> Anybody out there? Anybody? XF I, don't, I, think, I think it <laughs> who was won? Birmingham. Who won the XFL last year? Nobody. I think, wasn't it Birmingham? No, no. Yeah, the answer to that question is about the same as who's the who's the head coach of the Minnesota Timberwolves? At the Alamo Dome in San Antonio. <laughs> who won? Nobody knows. TC Defenders? Who? The who? The Arlington Renegades. The da Dallas won? Well, Arlington. Are you sure? Did Dallas win a title? Oh! They won. Wow! Shots fired. They won on... Uh, they won in San Antonio. The Arlington Renegades defeated there the D.C. Go. Defenders in the XFL Championship 35-26. Um, and that took place on May Kevin 15th. Anthony. Kevin Anthony, you got your title in, in Dallas. Thank you, Jason. Dallas won a championship. The XFL uh, Senators or Ren Renegades? Renegades. All right, there you go. Yeah, Kevin Anthony said it. How come nobody made a meme about that? That's coming soon. Y'all y'all listen right here. You heard it on Sports with Balls. That meme is coming soon. Did you see the JFK meme? Oh, no. What was it? Oh, no. It's, it's pretty bad. Is it brutal? Yeah, it's oh, like, man. well, ever since JFK passed away, it's a shame. He oh. only missed... Detroit's one yeah. playoff. Yeah. He missed one playoff game from the Lions. Uh, Detroit Lions are an interesting team. They had such a good heartwarming season last year, and their head coach is such a charismatic guy. His whole coffee raid. Remember, I think you came on the radio oh, yeah. show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Like, I, I, it's hard to repeat that. Jared Goff, and you know, you had mentioned Ahmad St. Brown um, right before the game. That guy's absolutely incredible. <laughs> it's just. These defensive coordinators are smart, and I just wonder if if they they're gonna have Detroit's number like Hawkinson, T.J. Hawkinson, breakout uh, okay. start tight end, and then they had uh, their de defensive guy, they, their number one draft pick. Uh, golly, why is his name slipping my my mind right now? But they have a good team surrounding them. I don't know if they can repeat that that kind of success because teams are looking forward to them now. So I, I don't. I think it's going to be a little bit harder for the Detroit Lions. There's a lot of expectation there, and I think those need to be tempered as well. But you know, we'll see. I, I, I don't. If they win nine games, I'm good with it. Look, they've gotten better since Jared Goff went there. Yep. I mean, I, I think that they continue to raise the bar. They've been so quiet all off season. Uh, I have to read some of these comments because it cracks me up. Kevin Anthony says, "Shut y'all's dang mouths. Bring the turtleneck <laughs> back, Jeff." Oh. <laughs> 
<laughs> Jeff and his turtleneck. This is a fun Thursday it's, it's show, guys. It's not winter time All yet, right. but I got a feeling. Look, are I, you kidding? It's like 115 degrees. Look, no, no BS, y'all. It was 109 in Houston, Texas today. We broke a, another record. Uh, that is unbelievable. This is not Vegas where I'll be in a we couple days. We are done look. cooking. Man, dude, we are done cooking. Didn't I lose a bet to Kevin Anthony? Yeah, I did last year. That's why I had to wear it. Um, so that one's coming up. So Kevin, he's ready for you. To let's put get a, a bet going. All right. Um, I'm not really sure. Uh, you know, we'll do Cowboy. Let me look at the schedule of the Cowboys. Maybe we'll do a first seven games. You know, okay. we'll do an over under, something like that. Kevin, try to think of a good bet. Um, don't you involve the Texans? I, I don't know why. Ever, don't I, you involve the Texans? I, well, I know it's gonna like everybody has this this preconceived notion that I'm like some massive Houston Texans fan. I'm like I'm uh, not. What like, are? I don't even know what you are. You're bandwagon. You want the Jets to win now because no, Aaron Rodgers. No, no, no. And I, the Hard Knocks. Look, I I love doing sports, and when you do sports on a national, you sort of have to. You can't really have a a, a specific team that you root for, especially in the NFL, and. I was an Oilers fan growing up. The Houston Oilers moved, and I refused to be a Nashville fan because I'm from Memphis. So I was like, I, I don't want to be a, a, a Houston, a, a Houston Nashville or Nashville Oilers fan, and then it turned into Nashville Titans. Uh, yeah, boo, uh, boo, I, boo. I, I just so I, I lost my team. And then the Texans, when the Texans came here, it was a terrible organization from top to bottom from day one. And so I was like. Oh, no. They have messed up in every possible way. So I just what I, 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 I lost team a, hasn't. Uh, a lot of them. Green Bay Packers are on their third quarterback in, what, 40 years? <laughs> uh, <laughs> I don't well, know. Like, I'm just saying. On like, the field, off the field, office stuff. I'm yeah, just saying. Like, well, Every the, team has its own drama. For sure. Well, a lot of them do. But the Houston Texans have made some very boneheaded decisions and, and mistakes. And, um, you know, the, they, had a t they had a city behind them that really supported them for year after year. And we're in the t year 20, and they've done nothing for the city. Zero. In fact, to the point last year – People started boycotting them. They wouldn't go to the games. You remember the stadium towards the end of the year? It was like one fourth of the way full. Right? That's how you do change. Is yes. Hit them with the hit, hit them in the they wallet. They have back to back coaches. Have one year, one year tenures. That's terrible. And then they finally got their coach, D'Amico Ryan's the ex player. So hopefully they can do something. And then they got C.J. Stroud. But if they screw up this thing with C.J. Stroud, well, if they've hit rock bottom, only way is up, right? There you go. Amen to that. Amen. You know, I mean, that's my d there. There, you want to? Yeah, that, 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 there we go. There we go. Okay. <laughs> that's my. I don't. I'm not a Texans fan. Speech. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, go. okay. So you go with whoever's good. Okay. No, Bandwagon. no. I go with the NFL, especially fantasy football. I watch Red Zone. I, don't I know do if too. Ever, like, I, I mean, watch Red Zone. Who doesn't like constant action yes. in the end zone? Are you kidding Damn. me? For it's, sure. Who wants? If they yeah, like, I'm, I get to watch 15 different games or whatever, 12 different games, and then. All or, day. Or, or oh. I, I have a question on, about that. Or I could put it on ABC and watch the Houston Texans and the what? Pittsburgh Steelers just you, play around in the middle of the 30-yard line. Said you said red, on, you said red zone, question? right? Yep. So yes. You said red zone. So do you think that because of the popularity of fantasy football that – 100%. The red zone is becoming the more thing where it's like people are more interested oh, yeah. in just football in general as yep. opposed to the team itself. Yeah, exactly. So more people have, have moved in the general direction that I'm in, right? So you're, you're rooting for players and, and all kinds of teams. You're Like fantasy football got people now starting to root for players and not just teams. And that is why the old heads get really pissed off about fantasy football because like, it takes you away from rooting for a certain team. That's exactly what I was about to say. You have to pay attention to every team because all your guys are spread throughout the NFL. So it has really created attraction <laughs> to just watch Kevin. other sports teams. Uh, yeah, Kevin Anthony said Jeff was on the Raiders bandwagon uh, previously. I was. He was <laughs> when, guess what? They were on hard knocks. And John uh, – uh, John, John Gruden. Gruden. John Gruden. Who's with me? Knock, 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 knock. I, I was, I was all in on Carr, and, and I was in on like I, I was, I was about the Raiders. Uh -huh. I thought they were gonna do great, man. And then the bottom fell out from <laughs> in, internally, and I, was, I tried to stay with them, but that that failed. You know, it's funny. I they thought we would hear a lot more from John Gruden since all of this stuff happened, but they've kept it hush hush and just quiet. Yeah, he won a couple of battles. He's actually a coach now back in the NFL, I believe. He's in. He's See, in some, like who some, knows that? Yeah, he's in, he's some some sort of office front or something. He's helping out doing something. But, yeah, he won a battle with them. I know that in court. But, yeah, like you said, of course, the NFL, their attorneys, whoo, million dollars an hour. They're going to keep everything like that completely hush-hush. And then they sold uh, the Washington Redskins, Washington Commanders, Washington football team, whichever one you choose. They sold and if them. You like were, if you are a player there, what do you say? I, I play for a team. Yeah, like if you're an ex-player, <laughs> like if you're an ex-Washington Redskin, yeah. like who, who do you say you played for? 
I don't know. I heard a rumor they're going to try to change that team name back to, back the, Redskins, to the Redskins. And man, that would be fantastic. Yeah. I was even okay with Washington football team. I liked that name. But now the Commanders is just, that's just a bad, bad name. All right, guys, we are halfway through the show or over halfway through the show. So welcome into Sports with Balls. Those of y'all just tuning in, we're live at Christian's Tailgate, one of five locations here in Houston, Texas. Come get your drink on, come get your eat on. And uh, if you want to get your buzz on, grab one of these ho buzzes. Uh, or go to hobuzzco.com uh, for some THC seltzers. Stuff is actually really, really good. 832-929-4563 or like I said, hobuzzco.com. That's H-O-B-U-Z-Z-C-O.com. Go order yours now or uh, come up here, grab you a few of them. They are really good. Good or get a margarita. Get something to cool down. Get a margarita. It's hot. I know. I know that is needs, so Houston. Yeah, I know who needs to cool down is the uh, Boston Red Sox after what they did to the Houston Astros here a little bit ago. Uh, good segue. So yeah, wow. the MLB standings heating up as we're getting in. You know, the, we're in the dog days of summer. Yeah, one hundred percent. And today, Jason, our producer, <laughs> worked the Astros game. And got to see Martin Maldonado pitch. Wow. It was a long game. Hey, look, that is the that is the most positive thing that I could possibly say out of this whole thing. That was a great way to put it. <laughs> you have to see Martin Maldonado, the catcher for the Astros, pitch. I don't think you'll ever <laughs> see that again. We That's were all so like, interesting. I want to see on. clips of this. <laughs> yeah. I'm not going to lie. I was on the phone with my buddy Joe Applewhite, who, who's, a, who's a contributor to the show, and I FaceTimed Joe to show him you're not going to believe what's going on. And he's like, what? And so I FaceTimed him and put it up there, and I was like, Martin Maldonado is yeah. pitching in the Astros game. He was like, are you kidding me? Uh, I, I, we'll get a clip up on Sports with Balls. Go to Sports with Balls on any one of the social media sites, Twitter, Facebook, uh, Twitch, Instagram. They're uh, On every one of them, we're there. So uh, we'll get a look, the memes and everything that we put up. It's called Sports with Balls for a reason. Go follow us. It's all on there. We'll get uh, Martin Maldonado pitching up because I'm, I'm sure by now there's plenty of memes. It was it was softball pitch is what he was doing. It was amazing. And our producer, Jason, got to sit there and watch it live. So there you go, man. Uh, is, is, is that one of the wildest things you've ever seen at Astros game? Yeah, it, it, it's pretty crazy seeing Maldonado up on the uh, on the mound. How it many was, runs did he give up? Because they I'm were sure it blasted. was crazy oh, for him. Uh, he gave up, I think, Five runs, four runs off of five hits, I believe. Like, does so has he ever pitched? He gave up one bomb. So though. he has an ERA now. What was that? He has an ERA. Yeah, well, he, in, the, uh, in major uh, league, he only he had pitched once before. Oh, he that did. Was, that was his second time okay. pitching. Right. Okay. But his other time, he go. actually got all the he got I think two batters out. So. Wow. Wow. Okay. Martin Maldon, the world is backwards right now. Well, it was, it was a home run derby <laughs> at Minute Maid Park today. When he got up, uh, when he started pitching, I think it was 13-0, to zero, somewhere like that, and the game ended up 7, or I'm sorry, 13-1. It was 17-1. to one Yeah, it was four the, runs off of five hits. By the end of this game. After um, losing an extra innings last night, yeah, too. Off of, off a of three-run homer in the top yep. of the 10th inning, the Houston Astros – have had their opportunities to be in first place in the AL West and have squandered them a lot. And it is very frustrating to watch that team right now. Now they're standing in third. Can you believe that? No, I can. I really can. If you watch that team, it is – and I hate – look, I, I got three or four messages immediately after this game or during it like they're terrible, blah, blah, blah. You're comparing them to the last five years. It's not a terrible baseball team. It's just not as good as as the other teams were the last five years. Yeah, like, they have the yeah. same. They have yeah. the same wins as Texas. They're just uh, don't have as many losses. If that makes sense. So we're standing third <sighs> with we're standing in third with Texas, seventy two and fifty four. Seattle's at seventy one and fifty six, and we're at seventy two and fifty seven. I want to say there's thirty. 32 games, 30 or 32 games left in the season. Mm -hmm. And I do know this. I know that Seattle and Texas have to play each other nine more games. So All that right. that's going to be interesting. Down I'm assuming the stretch, at both stadiums. Yeah, down the stretch, the Astros do have an advantage schedule-wise. They play the Oakland A's a few times. I want to say they play Detroit a few times. The Astros do have a little bit of a, 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 an advantage when it comes to scheduling because, like I said, the Rangers and the Seattle Mariners have to go at it at least nine more times head-to-head. -head. Mm -hmm. So, again, the Astros are going to have their opportunity, but it just looks awkward. And then you hear the news about Michael Brantley today where he got sent back down to the minors with Dusty Baker. And you're like, you saw him in the dugout. And you're like, what the hell is going on? Yeah, like because why? I didn't think he was coming back. And then all of a sudden, whoa, he's going to make an appearance. He is going to be back in the lineup. 
And I don't, I'm not sure. But then it was so odd the other day with Jordan Alvarez and his finger slammed yeah. into the wall. This guy made a paper mache, dude. What oh, the? Heck? What in the world? Um, but on another note, last night I was hosting the Houston Dynamo FC game, and it was a semifinal for the U.S. Open Cup. So I bring it up right now because obviously – Astros and Dynamo, like Minute Maid Park and Shell Energy Stadium, are on the same street. Yep. So parking's crazy. Games are going on at the same time. Astros are going into extra innings. And we're like, no, we need Astros to end now because if we end, then we're just, it's going to be a cluster when it's, once we leave the stadium. Because since it was an open cup, it couldn't end in a tie. Yep. We had to go into extra time, two 15-minute halves, and then we go to penalty kicks from there. But with the Dynamo win last night, guess what? Look, if you're going to say that somehow they're going to play messy, I'm going to change my U of H. They are. Okay, so my U of H Texas game is going to change. I need to be on the field for uh, the Dynamo and Messi. <laughs> so, yeah, <laughs> it's happening. So uh, there, we'll It's happening that. because last night was the semifinals. There we go. And we knocked out Real Salt Lake, and we were watching Miami and Cincinnati, and they, and they were tied. And then Messi had to hit the penalty kick and got yep. the win. Crazy, because they came back because they were down. So now it's happening. Houston Dynamo are in the U.S. Open Cup again. They it won it in 2018, and it's going to be in Miami. Oh, my damn. It's going to be in Miami. We don't get to go to that one? Let's take a flight. Let's go. You have a lot of friends Podcast that have Miami. Well, yeah, I mean, I can go to Miami anytime. I'm down with that. Let's go to Miami. When is it? When is it? Uh, Do you know? Probably next week. No, they give them a, a – well, ah. I don't know. Maybe it is next week. But, uh, yeah, I'm down for that. That That's a lot of traveling. Wow. Uh, Vegas in two days. Cannot wait. But you're about to go somewhere else after that, too. Yeah, Lake Charles on Thursday as well. So we'll try to squeeze in a uh, hungover Jeff show on Monday. That'll be a lot of fun. <laughs> That'll be a lot of fun. But uh, we were talking about Major League Baseball. We were, we were. And I just got on my little tangent. Yeah, no worries. And so we have the Houston Astros, the Texas Rangers, and the, the Seattle Mariners all battling out in the AL West. But right below them is the Toronto Blue Jays as well. All, all these teams could either make or miss the playoffs. Every single one of them. There's only three spots right there available in the wild card. So it, it, it's going to be real interesting what happens. It's, it's going to be a lot of fun to watch. But th those Houston Astros fans that think that this team is even close to those other teams, you're wrong. You're wrong. I'm sorry. I don't know if they're going to pick it up. I forever, all season long, thought that these guys were going to start clicking and start putting together four to five game win streaks on a consistent basis, and they have not. Mm. It, it, in fact, they've lost more than they win, and especially in the games that they should win. They're getting blown out. They lost 17-1 to one today. That character of the team, that says a lot about the dugout. Mama Lil said, ha, oh, Jeff, hang in there. I will. Hang in there. I it's going to be okay. Speaking of being out, Shohei Otani. This is a really, the really show. interesting subject. So Shohei Otani. Jeff, when I first saw this, when I first saw that he was having a tear, I said, oh, they're just saving him. They're totally just saving him. No. He's going under. He may have to get surgery. Yeah, so he is out. He tore his UCL. Now, for those of you all that don't know, this is Tommy John. Right, he's already had one Tommy John surgery. There's only five players in Major League Baseball history that have come back from two Tommy John surgeries. And the weirdest thing about this is that he's in the lineup, and he will like tonight. He'll still be batting. He's going to keep playing. Tommy John apparently does not affect your swing. So the question here's the here's the the killer. You know how much money he lost by tearing his UCL. <laughs> Because you don't know like if he's it was like it was like he meant to do it. No, but like so all the teams that were looking at the yes, prospects that you, were you yeah. get a hitter and a pitcher. I don't know if this guy's going to come back and be a pitcher now. Can he? Because he's young. Of course, I think he can. But if he doesn't pitch, there goes that seven hundred million dollar man. It's out. The, like, that's done. He that that biggest contract ever for Shohei Otani and the, the this show that the show that was Shohei that's going to be gone now. Look, I mean, this happens though to a lot of guys. Like not the t double Tommy John surgery, but coming back and still getting the huge contract. I mean, you see his teammate, um, but he's he's always injury prone too. Well, yeah, uh, Mike Trout. Mike Trout. Mike Trout. He Mike was Trout. <laughs> but, but the thing is. I'm I, sorry, still, I'm not trying to laugh at him. Still to the point, he gets these huge contracts like he's in right now with the Angels, and he's continuously hurt. Fernando Tatis Jr., kind of same thing happened with him. These guys that get these large contracts, it doesn't, I mean, 
they're still going to get them because they think that they can come back from whatever it is. Well, just Otani's not going to break the bank anymore. And now the Angels, they didn't trade him. They could have got an entire farm system for that guy a, a month and a half ago. And now he's got a torn UCL. Like, I mean, his value just got cut in half. He's no longer a pitcher and a hitter. He is just a hitter. And you don't, you're looking at 18 months before he can pitch again. Mm -hmm. So the next contract that he gets, he's not, it's not going to be seven, eight hundred million dollars. It's going to be in the four to five hundred dollar range. Like literally, he just lost probably two hundred and fifty million dollars, if not more. Wow. That is insane mm -hmm. to think about. And the the Angels, who didn't trade him, look. Let, let's just put the icing on the cake here, too, with Trout, who just got back from injury, plays one game. Guess what? He's gone, too. <laughs> <laughs> it's like uh, the Angels. I, I don't even know what's going on. I, the, between the Yankees and the Angels, I, like baseball, whoo, unbelievable. I cannot – like if I'm an Angels fan, what's worse, Oakland A's fan or Angel fan right now? Mm, okay. Whoa. I mean, A's, really? These A's are going to really? Vegas. Really? Yeah, that's the rumor. That's true. That's true. But when is that going to happen? Uh, some other breaking news. Nationals pitcher Steven Strasburg will retire the World Series MVP and formal number one pick in the draft. Couldn't overcome complications from a thoracic outlet syndrome and tentatively, tentatively planning on a September announcement. One of the best pay pitchers in Major League Baseball for a long time. Steven Strasburg out of the game. So, man. Big baseball news, incredible. I, I love October baseball that's coming up, Sep, like late September baseball. It, it, this is going to be a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. This is what I, I absolutely love, the season four. It's long and grinding. Jason, I know you got to see Martin Maldonado pitch today, but those important games are coming. Those are fun. Like every stadium with any playoff race is about to be packed. Oh, yeah, and I for absolutely, sure. Absolutely. There's nothing better than watching a home run in the bottom of the ninth in a playoff race. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Now, whenever it comes to the postseason in MLB, are they still starting a guy on second and in extra innings? Yes. Okay. Okay. I couldn't remember if that if it continues yeah. to stay uh, in the same. I, th that is the, look, I do not like that rule. I do not. I don't yeah, I'm not a big fan of that one. All the other rules I'm actually okay with, and I think baseball is too. They are up 12%. They're up the most in ratings since 1988. Wow. That's incredible. Baseball's done a great job. The sport uh, is gaining a lot of fans. The pitch clock helps them, I assume. Yes, and a lot of people were against it. And I, I think when I first saw it, I was like, well, this is stupid. I want the drama buildup. But I've been to the games. I, uh, you and I have been to the games. I, I, I enjoy it. I, I think that getting a two like and a half, two and a half hour it, game in. I, 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 just, I just, I wish it was a little bit longer than the 20 or 25 seconds. You know what I mean? Yep. I, I just, I, I do. But uh, good for baseball. Good for us, right? Look, guys, if you missed any of this show, you can go back and find it on the podcast. Go to Sports with Balls on any podcast arena. It will be up this evening and up uh, all this weekend for the festivities and we'll have more shows to come for sure uh let's see we talked about nfl coming we talked about me going to vegas fantasy football <laughs> we talked about major league how, baseball ncaa football how hungover is jeff going to be on monday we Ooh, will find out the poll no and uh, i love all of you guys interacting with us yes. so please keep leaving your comments it's so fun um to see them and to see what your reactions are to what our takes are and if you have any questions like Please put them down in the comment section. We love it. Jason, I know you got something going on your band playing this weekend, right? Yeah, we're playing tomorrow. Ooh. At, uh, oh, yeah. So Friday night at Shoeshine Charlie's Big Top Lounge, which is on Main Street. I like that name. Right. I do too. I was just about to say Shoeshine Charlie's. Charlie's. Big Top Lounge. That sounds yes. like a blues bar on That's Field what I was Street. Thinking. Yeah, well, yeah Shoeshine. They do play blues there sometimes. Oh, that sounds uh, dope. Yeah, and it's right next to the Continental Club. It's behind where. Um, the Breakfast Club is so it's on that block right there. And what Come kind of music out. you going out with? We we are. This is our '90s band. So well, if you like any kind of '90s rock, Shush. pop, country, hip hop, we're even gonna do the Barbie song. I've seen you guys. Ah! Uh, I've, Barbie I've seen you guys live uh, doing the '90s, and uh, it was impressive, yes. man. I yeah. had a, I had a blast going to that show. So go to Shoe Top Charlie's. Shoe Shine Charlie. Shoe Shine. Shoe Shine Charlie's Charlie, Big man. Top Lounge. It's Dig gonna it, be. Man. It's gonna be a good time. Only five dollars. We want to thank Christian's Tailgate and their other five area Houston locations. As always, we're here for at least one show a week live, getting our drink on and our eat on. And also, ho buzz. Listen, man, you guys, this is a new fad, a new thing. Go check out H-O-B-U-Z. 
H-O, uh, H-U-B-U-Z-Z-C-O dot com, Hobuzz-C-O dot com. It is a THC infused seltzer. I will have the drinks here next week. I'll pass them out to the crowd. Uh, I might even need one because uh, I might be a little hungover. So. Oh, uh, okay. All right. You know, hey, hey. I'm going to try it. I'm going to try it. may have to take over the show for you. Uh, plans this weekend. All right. Plans this weekend. I'm not sure yet. We'll figure it out. I'll FaceTime you. I'll figure it out. All right, guys. Thank you for watching Sports with Ball. I'm Jeff Michael. She's Lauren Leal. See you next time. We out of here. Later.